Women on the Front Line, International Women's Day 2021. I am Janine St. Bernard, and I am the County Medical Officer of Health for County Kearney. I work within the Ministry of Health. I would have to say that the COVID-19 pandemic has made me a more grateful person. I have so much gratitude due to the level of support and collaboration that I have experienced while working uh, within the COVID-19 pandemic. Getting to work with the staff on such a very close uh, basis during the pandemic gave me a real deep sense of gratitude. Uh, apart from working with the team in the office, the, con the contact tracers, which included doctors and nurses, I was also critical in helping to set up a state quarantine facility uh, whereby persons who were being repatriated to Trinidad and Tobago, they would have to come there to quarantine. And I worked closely with doctors, nurses, Trinidad and Tobago Police Service, the Trinidad and Tobago Defense Force, Global Medical Response Trinidad and Tobago, and in working with all of these persons to make things happen and to see things actually work out very smoothly made me feel very thankful. Uh, in even moving forward, when we had to manage cases at home, the COVID-19 cases at home, uh, where we weren't just organizing for transfer into the treatment sites, the GMRTT team, they are the ones that would take our calls to see if it is this person can remain at home, or if it is when they were assessed, they needed to be transported into a facility. So they were very much bringing a sense of peace to me and to us as County Medical Officers of Health because it meant we weren't feeling uncomfortable with the idea of COVID-19 patients being managed at home. And then uh, when you look at even the support from the National COVID Coordinator, we had a coordinator who was also very much hands-on in terms of support. So basically, every single day, we would be in contact with the coordinator to call, to get assistance with making decisions. And she would answer every call, no matter the hour of day or night. And if she couldn't take the call, she would then respond with a message to say when you could call. So we didn't just feel you know, exposed and out there trying to manage cases and wondering, are we doing the right thing or not? Having even the technical support within the ministry and having supervisors who also were very amenable to giving support, verbal support, even with, you know, via WhatsApp messages, always being available within the ministry. That was something that I had not experienced before, I guess because we didn't have the need for that level of on, on hand, so hands on support. So having that support within the ministry was something that really made me feel a sense of gratitude. I kept saying it from the very start of the pandemic. Initially, it was pace and just work and work and work. But after a while, I remember telling my husband, I feel grateful, I feel thankful. In other countries, I don't know if that's what's happening, but based on what we were seeing right here in Trinidad and Tobago, I was grateful. And of course, I can't forget the impact on my home because I am a wife and a mother of three children. And my three children are minors. So having to leave home very early, every single morning, working seven days a week. I had the support that I needed at home so that I would not feel that I'm leaving my children unsupervised and therefore unsafe while I had to go out there and do what needed to be done on a daily basis. Uh, daily basis. Uh, during the pandemic, there was a certain phase in the very early, early part of it where I needed to be literally leaving home at the crack of dawn and heading out to the office to manage all of the different things that were happening. So having that support at home, of course, gave me a sense of peace or else I literally think I could have become unwell if I didn't have that kind of support. As you know, different things would have been declared and announced, right, by the Prime Minister with regard to how we were expected to work. There was a point in which it was just essential workers. Oh, I love that time, you know, driving down the road, no traffic, you know, getting to where you need to get to. Um, I worked with different categories of staff. So apart, not just doctors, we had doctors, we had nurses, you had cleaners. And uh, we were cognizant of the fact that people are required to come out to work because we are literally frontline and essential, but also you have lives, you have children. Some people are caregivers, not just to children. Some people are caregivers to their parents, their ailing parents who are already living with them, or they were a support system for their parents or elderly relatives who were living that uh, close by or far. And so what we would have done, which was recommended, is we would do things like alternate the days that people are coming out to work. And sometimes even when you were scheduled to come a certain day, if it is something has come up, there was always a sense of compassion and patience with, with others because it is a stressful time and we are grateful 
you know, that, that people are willing. So what we did is we tried to be as flexible and as supportive and as compassionate as possible so that the work could get done without people feeling too burdened. Um, at the quarantine facility, we actually had staff who needed to stay for two weeks at a time. And so sometimes if something comes up, you may hear them requesting, well, can I start a little bit later? Something has happened with my daughter. I need to just sort them out with regard to school and so on. And we would say, well, of course, you know, we can't just be so militant about getting the work done. Forget, forget that other people need to also have a balance with their lives. One of our doctors actually had a baby. You know, so she would have gone off on some leave. And of course, when she came back out, still, you know how it is with the very young ones. So we tried to be flexible. And I think that even allowed for greater productivity. That is something I would say I have definitely taken note of. The increased flexibility has led to more productivity among the staff because they know, well, listen, I will be leaving early and I'm going to get the same work I could have done in eight hours. I can actually do it in four and leave earlier or I know I'm getting to not come tomorrow, so I'm gonna to try to really clear up the desk and make sure that I've done as much as I can today, so I'm not leaving too much for the person who's coming tomorrow. So that has been a very positive um, impact, actually, coming out of the, the pandemic. I have always wanted to be a doctor. I wanted to be a doctor since I was five years old. And so feeling a sense of purpose and meaning I had some sense of meaning before, but getting to kind of rise to the occasion and really having that sense of I am contributing in a very meaningful way to fighting the COVID-19 pandemic, that gave me a real deep sense of gratitude. I felt as if I was finally fulfilling the purpose for which I was created. You know, a wise man once said, everything is beautiful in its time. And I felt as if this was a time of beauty for me. Uh, getting to rise to the occasion, uh, rise to, to having a lot more work to do, but yet having peace knowing that, you know, the home is not fragmenting at the same time. So for me, the overall impact on me is a sense of gratitude. The impact, of course, would also have, you know, there's exhaustion, tiredness, frustration, but that waking up every morning to there is a team and they are there available to help. The team that includes those above, those at the same level, those below. But everyone was willing and that impacted me deeply. There's a sense in which I saw Trinidad and Tobago citizens in a different way. I saw workers in a different way. We didn't have unwillingness. We didn't have people saying, why do I have to do that? It was as if there was one common enemy, COVID-19, and everyone stood up and took their place to fight. And I think that we are winning. I think it is a great day to celebrate women. I think that in as much as women are not just managing uh, households and managing families and, and you know, doing what needs to be done in the home, which you know, some men are also doing, I think it's great that women in this time are also rising and, and being able to perform uh, at a, a great levels of leadership within health uh, right now. And it's not as if women are given a bly, so you're not, you're not qualified, but you know, come on up and come and sit at the table. I mean, we're doing the same things in terms of you do the studying and you, you qualify yourselves. And I guess based on your gift or your talent, then basically you get to be highlighted in a certain kind of way because different persons have different you know, talents and abilities or, or special qualities that can come to the fore. But I think that this is a time where we should be celebrating women because women are continuing to manage in the workplace and manage well while also managing the home and continuing to be you know the core of the fabric of society because remember if you don't raise children well if you don't uh, uh, develop families strongly then you will not have a society in which you know people can feel safe women on the front line international women's day 2021